Third chapter of Galatians, 25 and 29. Now faith has come. We are no longer under the supervision of the law. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, as we come to your table, we pause to reflect so we don't take this moment lightly. We know the symbols we hold represent the pain and suffering you endured, not for anything you did wrong, but for our sins. We ask for forgiveness, and we thank you for loving us enough to pay this price. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. The event we will commemorate on Monday, Thursday, we're reminded that as he was eating supper with his disciples, Jesus took the bread. He broke it. He said, take, eat of this, all of you, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, when they had finished eating, he took the cup, asked God to bless him. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, my blood poured out for you. Given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there. 
which no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went ahead and found a colt outside in the street, tied in the doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. Amen. Thank you. Celebrations. Uh, Tracy had some good news. She's been heading out of Bellbrook and she is now doing the uh, Bible study there, leading the Bible study. So, uh, we're glad for that. Josh uh, is out for track and doing well, and uh, he uh, has a track meet here this Tuesday. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Tuesday afternoon. So, uh, if you're not doing anything, why well, go out and see Josh run? <laughs> Remember your little reader, Roman, Roman, David, Bun? <laughs> okay. <laughs> a couple of little funnies from uh, the Florida trip. Uh, David was saying that uh, Naples, Florida is right down uh, against the Everglades and the Keys, and uh, it's really a, a, a nice, uh, they call it upscale area. I would call it uh, extravagant. But uh, anyway, uh, David says the saying in Florida is that if you think you're old or you think you're rich, go to Naples and you'll find out you're neither one. <laughs> we uh, took the glass bottom boat ride out eight miles, and uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, the ocean just drops off, just gets deeper, one foot for every mile you go for eight miles. It uh, is very, very gradual, and you can see the bottom way, way out, uh, almost out of, out of the solid land. After you get out eight miles, it drops off 28,000 feet. That's over three miles. <laughs> I thought Grand Canyon was deep. <laughs> Just a, a celebration, 
but it was a time to be happy and to come together and to eat together. Uh, last Sunday, uh, you know, it's just fun to come together and eat together with folks. Just uh, there's something special about breaking bread with one another. But uh, a wonderful time, just uh, eating together, uh, being together, uh, enjoying. Somebody talked uh, something about basketball this morning, and uh, we, we talked about celebrations. Uh, I've been watching the Iowa Hawkeyes uh, ladies team, and they have a, a girl by the name of Caitlin Clark, who has uh, been busy breaking all the records uh, in the NCAA, and also uh, it looks like she's going to break uh, a few records in the tournament also. I think also uh, already she's uh, scored over 40 points in three consecutive NCAA championship games. And I think that's a record, and she uh, just has to score 20 points today to break the all-time record for a lady scoring in, in the NCAA tournament. But uh, it was kind of interesting. I, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but after the ball game uh, Friday, why she was out on the court uh, saying to the Iowa fans, hey, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. Get it up. Let's, let's hear about this. And I don't know, I, I don't know how I feel about that, but you know, uh, celebrate, uh, celebration uh, is good. And I was thinking about uh, the good defensive end uh, that the Chiefs have, Carl Loftus, and the first sack he got, he got up and he didn't know quite what to do, so he just kind of ran in place a little bit, and uh, they were teasing Patrick Mahomes after that about, about that, and, Patrick said, well, uh, we're going to have to work on that. We're going to have to work with him on that celebration. <laughs> but, you know, the pro football players always have to celebrate after they make a touchdown. Everybody wants to do something a little bit different. Now it's uh, bringing, bringing all the team down and getting right in front of the TV camera. Anyway, celebration is good if we're celebrating for the right reason, celebrating the right things. A table before me in the presence of my enemies. You set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God does love to bless his children. And David in the 23rd Psalm says, You set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You, you bless me. You just uh, overload me with blessing. My cup absolutely runneth over. Couldn't we say we are there right now? When compared to the other people of the world, don't we have a lot to celebrate? Wow, we are blessed people. We are blessed people. Shouldn't we celebrate being happy? And how do we celebrate? How do we go about that? Well, to celebrate in the secular society means some things that I don't think Christians should be celebrating in that manner. In giving more of ourselves over to the state, over to looking at Jesus, over to meditation with God, over to prayer, more time with prayer, isn't that a way to celebrate? Couldn't we celebrate by doing that? Giving more of ourselves and wondering how we can serve more, how we can give more. We have a freedom in Jesus. We have been set free. We're free from bondage and death. We're free from that. We're free to live, love, enjoy, and love others, and give the love that Jesus gave. Don't you enjoy seeing your friends and family celebrating and having a good time? <clears throat>
full of vendors and uh, opening their gifts and uh, just, just having a good time. It's, it's such a uh, fulfilling time to see the young people so happy and, and celebrate. We enjoy it. King comes to you righteous. What do we mean by righteous? It means he was right with God. He was right with God. He lived without sin. Hard for us to get our head around that, but it's true. We have to accept it on faith. He was righteous. And having salvation, what's the most important thing we're going to take out of this life? Well, it would be salvation and eternal life. One of the fellows at Promise Keeper Conference said, I've counseled with lots and lots of people on the deathbed. I never heard anybody say, I wish I'd put in more hours at the office. I wish I'd spent more time running around, going to football games, playing golf. But I've heard a lot of people say, I wish I'd spent more time with my family and getting them closer to the Lord and spent more time in church and spend more time serving the church. What's going to be important when it comes to us on that deathbed? Peace of mind, salvation, and eternal life. <coughs> Jesus brings salvation to us. 
gentle. Gentle. If they don't shout, the rocks will. If 
Pharaoh shall not hear. Jesus comes for the Spirit, for the Spirit, not the physical. Are we ever disappointed when the Lord doesn't heal our physical as well as we would like Him to? hard to explain because sometimes it seems he does, sometimes it seems he doesn't. And that's a hard thing to explain. I have stood in a hospital room with a baby in my arms and still born, looking at a mother. I believe that's the hardest thing I ever had to do. His mother just carried this baby nine months and was still born. And some of you have had that experience. That's hard. And it's hard to understand. And it's hard to find a reason why. And it can shake our faith. It absolutely can. But as Peter said, what else is what else is and as us older folks look back across life and see where God and Jesus were working constantly all the time, and we see some of the hardest times in our lives turned out for the best. Jesus said, give the disciples one hour of glory. He knew. He knew what was going to happen. Is it possible, <laughs> my mind goes off here and there, is it possible that Jesus, by uh, this triumphal entry, was enraging and uh, making the Pharisees so mad that they felt like they absolutely had to do something? They couldn't stand this. Jesus was taking their people. They were jealous of him. He was saying all the right things. They couldn't argue with what he was saying. But they sure didn't like it. Was he doing that just to enrage them all the more? Well, it certainly was. Could possibly Jesus have been holding out a thread of hope that everything might change? He wanted it to change. As he stood at Bethany looking over Jerusalem, <coughs> he cried. He cried for Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how badly I wanted to take you. As a hen takes her chickens and puts them underneath her and protects him and takes care of him and nurtures him. How badly I wanted to do that. And he stood there and cried. But he knew there was just no chance. Think of the conflicting emotions that Jesus had while he was going into Jerusalem. Back a few chapters, it said he set his face on Jerusalem. And the disciples said, what are you doing? And then they said to each other, I guess we're going to go die with him. He's everything to us. He's the leader. He chooses where we eat. He chooses where we sleep. He chooses what we do. We don't go any other way. So let's go with him. The Lord wants us to celebrate and be happy. He wants us to be uh, cheerful and have joy and have love. But he also wants us to do it for the right reasons. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this time together. Thank you.
thank you for the message that you give us through Jesus and the triumphal entry and the hour of glory that they all share. Lord, we know the outcome. We know the future. We know what happened. And we know the conflicting emotions that Jesus must have been fighting all the way through all of this. But he allowed his disciples and his followers a moment of glory. Help us to celebrate, but help us to celebrate because of the Spirit, because of the Spirit of love that Jesus brought to the earth, left here, and told us to take care of, and to spread and to give. We pray in his name. with us.